You know, a part of the reason why um, our jobs are so awesome <laughs> is because we can pretty much do it from anywhere. Like right now, I'm being a little bit quiet. This is going to be a little bit of a quiet podcast because I'm sitting inside of what can only really be described as a unique hostel. This is Book in Bed Tokyo. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to be quiet because not only are these actual cubbies where people sleep, it's like capsule hotels and whatnot. Um, it's also themed like a bookstore. So it's pretty crazy. Anyway, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pocket Now Weekly Podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Uh, again, I am coming to you live from Tokyo right now, just spending a few days here after uh, we're still reeling from the Oppo Innovation Day event that happened in Shenzhen, China last week. Uh, but as far as today's episode is concerned, I am going to be talking about uh, a couple of pieces of news that came out from Google this past week, uh, mainly the fact that they have uh, what they call feature drops, which are bigger updates that are meant to be happening more often uh, on top of all of the monthly updates that you might be used to seeing on your pixels and on some other Android phones. And then finally, I bring back our friend David Immel because he and I are actual users. I'm not wearing them right now, but uh, he and I are actual users of a pair of smart wearable glasses called the Focals by North. And uh, while we were in Shenzhen, China, North actually announced that they're going to stop production of the Gen 1 glasses because Gen 2 is on the way. And there are a number of updates about that that we're really excited for. Uh, Google did their first ever what they called the pixel feature drop and that language is really interesting to me I'll talk about it in a little bit but basically what Google is trying to do here uh, is roll out not only security patches every single month but the pixel first features are going to start appearing and if you have a pixel 4 and any other pixel you might be getting features that most other Android devices don't have and you might be the first people to actually enjoy them this particular feature drop the first one ever um, added in a couple of features on the camera side including uh, the addition of blur in the background when you're using the Google Photos app. So when it detects that it's more or less a portrait, it'll be able to add that blur in. And then there's also automatic call screening. Uh, so if the suspected spam caller icon is, is on a particular call that's trying to come in, it'll just go ahead and screen that call for you without you having to press that button, which is kind of cool. Google Duo is going to get smoother video calls, especially when the connection is not exactly stable. Uh, but also, who's using Google Duo? I think that the security updates um, are something that you can find on Pixel phones and other Android phones, and you have that bitter sense of mind. But as far as actually feeling like you're on the cutting edge of using a Pixel device, well, this is exactly the kind of thing that Google needs to do in order to make it feel that way. Because let's face it, the Google Pixel 4, the Pixel 4 XL, these particular new Pixels have not gotten the warmest reception from everybody, uh, partially because of the battery life and also the fact that some of the features don't really feel like they're on par with other Android Android flagships. Uh, so what Google might be doing here is creating features uh, on the fly. I don't know if it's really on the fly. Hopefully it's not going to be half-baked or anything like that, but uh, they're going to create features that you can get on a more regular basis in these feature drops. Still, it doesn't fix the fact that the Pixel 4 doesn't have a wide-angle camera. Its video quality is just basically fine. It's okay. It's not bad. It's not it's not the best. And then, of course, the obvious place that you might be getting a lot of these updates will be in places like Google Assistant, uh, like, for example, the screen calling, the automatic screen calling that we just talked about. But here's to hoping that it's going to end up being uh, a little bit more exciting uh, as these feature drops go along. After all, they're using a very specific form of language here, using the term drop. Okay, so I've been in China uh, for the last week. Uh, before that, I was in Hawaii. Now I'm in Tokyo, which uh, is actually kind of a fashion capital in and of itself. And yeah, I've already seen a few people running around with like Supreme shirts and hats on. And that is the reason why I kind of laugh at this whole language, the fact that they're using the term drop. So feature drops. So Google is probably going to end up marketing these things a little bit more because you, when you talk about a feature drop, you're trying to create hype around it. So you're pretty much telling everybody, get hype, a new feature drop is on the way. Um, and then on the day, it's like, yeah, we dropped these few things <laughs> into your Pixel 4 and Pixel 4 XLs um, and other pixels, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, the term drop is so funny to me because it is literally a hype up term. Um, and I don't know if people are going to feel that way when they actually get these on a quarterly basis. So if you have a Pixel, if you have a Pixel 4 or anything like that, and you hear the word drop, are you going to be excited for those features? And again, uh, we don't know what they're going to be until the drop actually happens. And again, let me just reiterate the question from before. Let me know what kind of features you want to see in these feature drops. Is there something that you want to be fixed on the Pixel 4? Or is there a feature that you think that Google should be trying out more? And if you have a Pixel, you get to try it out before everybody else. Well, that'll do it for the first section of this podcast. I'm going to go ahead and head over to our ad break, and then we'll talk about Focals by North 2.0.
Is your Wi-Fi feeling pretty old? Does it buffer while you're streaming? Does connecting new devices slow it down? Actually, can it handle gaming, video calls, large file transfers, and you know what? Can it handle it all at once? It doesn't matter how fast your internet is if your Wi-Fi router is old and outdated. That's true. With Orbi Wi-Fi 6 from Netgear, your Wi-Fi will feel new again. So this is all about Wi-Fi 6, the latest tech that allows more devices to connect and stream simultaneously without impacting speed and reliability. The result delivers the fastest Wi-Fi for all of your devices anywhere in your home. Stream in HD, 4K, and even 8K, man, that's coming, uh, without buffering, eliminate lag while gaming, and connect more devices to your Wi-Fi than ever before. Orbi Wi-Fi 6 is like upgrading your Wi-Fi to first class. If you're ready for Netgear's best Wi-Fi ever, you can get it today from Netgear and never worry about Wi-Fi again. Check out the Orbi Wi-Fi 6 at your local Best Buy or at netgear.com slash best Wi-Fi. That's netgear.com slash best Wi-Fi. Okay, so if you are really big into wearables, then you might know about smart glasses. There are a few iterations out there, uh, ones that are not out yet, and one in particular that we're going to talk about in a second that is pretty prevalent, the Focals by North. Uh, just recently, I just saw a few people in New York hanging out with Huawei and talking about the Huawei Gentle Monster glasses. Um, so that's another form of wearables that we're starting to see more and more often. But Focals by North seems to be one of the most storied products in this category. Category, and for good reason. It's one of the only ones that actually does a visual-based um, wearable smart technology. So David Amell of Android Authority and myself, we actually got fitted four Focals by North, and we both are still trying to get our full reviews out on them. Uh, it's just been a really busy time. Uh, but we went through the whole experience of actually going to one of their stores, getting fitted for it, getting that 3D scan done. Um, and then we got our actual Focals by North and we've been using them for the last couple of months on and off. Uh, but this past week, Focals by North are actually out of production, the first gen at least, because North is going to start making a version that is actually slimmer, smaller, sleeker, and probably more accessible to a lot of people. So I brought David Amell on and we talked about Focals by North as we are two people who have actually used these glasses on the regular. So it seems the hype train is officially rolling again, not only because this past week we saw that the Find X2 is on the way, but apparently there's finally going to be, not finally, but there's going to be a, oh no, a V2 of these here. Focals X2. Mm-hmm, X2. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're wearing yours. I'm, I'm opting for my usual glasses just for, um, just for the sake of illustrating what these focals look like in the box. So yeah, they're, they're kind of big, but I think the reason why we're so excited for them is because we're gonna get a slimmer version. Um, what has your experience been like with them? You're wearing them right now. Yeah. They, they look good on you, I mean, honestly. Like, yeah. we, we got them fitted at the same yeah. time. <laughs> so like number one, uh, this fulfilled a fantasy I had where I've always wanted to wear glasses. Uh -huh. uh, and I actually went to get my eyes checked a couple weeks ago just because I was like, I haven't done this in 15 years and maybe I'll get to wear glasses. I have perfect vision. So <laughs> these are awesome for me because like they give me an excuse to wear glasses. Fair. Um, and they're just a nice accessory. Overall, I think my least favorite thing with them is that they have to be pretty specifically positioned on your face. Yeah. Um, now, luckily, in a more recent iteration, the version we got, because they change these constantly while mm -hmm. they're making them, they made these back parts bendable. Um, apparently, these didn't used to be malleable. It's it's really funny that you mentioned that because I still use my little oh. gl glasses. Hack. See, this is the thing. I'm the per I'm the one who actually needs glasses, <laughs> so yeah. that's why I was excited to get these because not only am I going to be using an <laughs> item that literally benefits me every single day, yeah. but now they're smart. So that's yeah. why you know you can see these are prescription glasses. So I have a few different pairs of smart glasses. Uh, including the Focals by North. I also have the Bose frames, which I do want to do a video. Those are kind of dope too. Yeah, I want to yeah. do a video on them on my channel as well. Uh, and then I also have another one that has like bone conduction, but they're definitely not that great, mm. to be honest. Um, but yes, the the little hack that I do. No, see, unlike yeah, traditional glasses. The new ones are actually going to fold like traditional glasses. Really? Yeah, have you seen the photos? I saw a graphic, but it was open. There's two photos. There's one where it's closed and they're thin enough where they actually can do this. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's dope. That's useful. I'm so excited. But yeah, these, this is my little hack for anybody out there that wants to make sure the glasses don't move at all. And this is really useful for heavy glasses like these smart glasses. Mm. These are called keepons. Yeah. They're literally hooks. They're like little like rubber hooks. well for me. Yeah. I highly recommend them, honestly. Yeah. All right. So I 
I guess my question here is, in your experience, and I'll share mine in a little bit, mm. did did Focals, or rather, did Norris prove that smart eyewear? Because we're starting to see more. I think mm. some of our tech friends were actually out taking a look at Huawei's um, Gentle Monster glasses. Just look how cool I look. <laughs> I look so cool. It's, it's not, not auto. It's not, not going to focus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, you know, I have to give them a ton of credit. Uh, because I was so sad when Google Glass didn't work out because the future of smart eyewear was so exciting for me. I remember almost spending literally more money than I had at the time in college to buy a pair of of, uh, Google Glass. (laughs) Well, the thing is I was already (laughs) sad by them because they did not look very good. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason they call people glass holes who wear them. Yeah. Yeah. But But at least these look like proper glasses. I have done, you know, I've I've walked around on the streets of New York in this and got yelled at by people saying like, "Mm, smart glasses, you piece of shit. I don't know. but, But, like, you can only really tell they're smart glasses if you look at them from the side. Yeah. Like the, from the front, these look pretty normal. And the, they're, it's just, they're just a little thick. That's little the only thick. thing. They're, yeah. they're going to be, yeah, the Gen 2 is going to be way thinner. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like you have to have them positioned pretty specifically. But if you do and they stay on your face in the same position, which they have for me now that I've gotten kind of the, the back thing correctly. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, and... I think they are going to refine the way that you see the image. Well, I just hope that the little area that you see um, where the projection is coming is reflecting back to you. Yeah. I just hope it's a little bit bigger. Because yeah. like you said, it has to be positioned perfectly yeah. so that your eye line is directly in that yeah. area. It's small and pretty specific. Yeah. Um, also, it's not completely clear. Isn't no. it usually pretty <laughs> hazy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to like align it. And if you get it correctly, it'll work out. But sometimes it just drifts. and Yeah. I don't know. I think I want to give them a lot of credit regardless, though, because I don't think that the smart glasses like industry would have kept evolving if it wasn't for them. Mm -hmm. They're like one of the only ones actually pushing it forward. You know, Huawei has like announced some smart glasses and apparently they had them at this Christmas party in New York that I missed. So yeah, I was that. saying that too. I was like, they're looking at the, yeah. they have the gentle monster glasses there. Yeah. Aren't they audio uh, based? Yeah. Okay. They're not. They're Which not I'm, okay. I'm, I'm generally okay with, but yeah, visual, visual forward smart glasses. <clears throat> I mean, Focals by North is really the only one that does yeah, it. Yeah. You know, for me, like I don't necessarily want more notifications in my face, but I appreciate the things that, fo- that smart glasses could do. Like mm-hmm. m- Google maps directions. For yeah. me, that's like the biggest thing. If I can take my phone out less uh just to like get around that's freaking awesome yeah and they you have to give them credit because they add new features like constantly Mm -hmm. like i've started working on my review but i keep having to like pause because they keep releasing big feature updates (laughs) so yeah that is part of it um so like recently uh, the features he's talking about um they had like they had twitter threads Mm -hmm. going up so it's based upon i used that it was decent well, they use it. Okay, so it's based upon the thread that you started, right? So you could just see replies to yours. Yeah, you can see replies, but you can reply with your voice too. Okay, yeah. It's oh, that's cool. right. There is a mic on here. There's a very tiny speaker that you could just hear it go off when your notifications yeah, come up. Yeah, it like chimes. Yeah, it chimes. That's a lot, word. and it's kind of loud. <laughs> like it is. Other people can hear it, so I generally turn that off. But. Have you had anybody actually look at you? Not just look at you weird, but notice that you're, let's say, reading a notification? Yes. <laughs> because when you kind of go cross eyed when you read that. Yeah, you do. Because you have to, like, both your eyes have to look in this direction, so you can like. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I wore them at Chris two. Chris always makes fun of me when I'm when I'm looking at that. I wore them at two weddings, mm. and it was funny because I got a text from the city that I live in to do a survey on the city that I live in. It was kind of weird. So when I got that text, I I was like, "What?" And I had this like look in my eyes, like, "What am I reading?" And then it was in the middle of church. In, in the ceremony and Issa just looks at me and she's like what did you get <laughs> what happened and it was funny because when I reacted it was after the pastor said something so it looked like I was being incredulous to what the pastor yeah, yeah, said yeah, yeah. so I was just like no 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 no, no. I got a, I got a thing on the glasses yeah. so the, where do you land on the um, <clears throat> the ring on the ring I like the ring a lot because I think that I think it could maybe be more rounded maybe mm-hmm. in the gen 2 they'll make it more rounded and less like it's got this weird thing oh but it's, I, it's hard I, I did have someone ask me like, they said like Hey, what ring are you wearing? That's kind of cool. So, like, it doesn't look bad. Yeah. Um, And I think it's a good way of interacting with the device um, because it's something that doesn't really get in your way. I have noticed that, like, 
if I'm typing, sometimes it's it can a get long, in my way. Yeah. I've off. actually had to reposition it from time to time. I know that this is the this is the classic yeah, uh, way of so doing do it. That. So like the point is pointing up, and you have the controls right where your thumb would land. But I've actually had it like upside down and like reconfigured it a little bit. Yeah. This okay. Smart glasses aside, I just had a thought one time when I was using this ring. Why don't they make smart rings that have like this little joystick and do vibration feedback for notifications? Like it's a true minimalist smart wearable. It might just oh, you mean. That, just, and that's it. Just the ring. Well, because this kind of proved to me that like this is another portion of the spectrum that people could look at wearables. Yeah. And no one's really looking at it that way. Like I have I mean, a sleep tracker on my other hand. Right. But this could be cool. We're using the same watch. But yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I guess I think it's probably because of battery size. Probably. Like, vibrations probably take up most of the battery in this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's why I don't use vibrations on this. I see. <laughs> um and the battery in this is probably so freaking tiny. That's true. It already dies kind of quickly. It lasts like a day and a half. Which is actually kind of true with the glasses in general too, Yeah, right? their, their battery life is not amazing. Yeah, Which and is... also look how big this case is. I yeah, mean, it's it's <laughs> just, to, just to uh, charge it up again. I would say what I want to see in the Gen 2 is I want them to be waterproof because currently they're not. And if it just starts randomly raining, like I, I haven't broken mine from the rain, but... You got worried. Well, I've worn them in the rain. They've they've gotten worn down, and then also there's these can like these metal pieces here, and mm -hmm. they're they're like pretty. What is the word? Exposed. Well, yeah, I got rain on them, and then they kind of like yeah, they got a little rusty. Rusted. Oh yeah. no! And then there's also these like the contacts, contacts yeah, here for That's charging. That's how you charge them. So I don't know. The Gen Two is super exciting to me. I hope that we can get some review units for those. So, final thought on these: um, Did you see these glasses as as they were marketing them, sort of, uh, as a way of adding to your? <laughs> it's kind of weird that I'm using this phrase, but adding to your digital well being, because <laughs> you weren't looking at your phone as much. I feel like <clears throat> I know I wasn't. That was that was honestly my experience <clears throat> with them. Is that when the notifications were coming in, I felt good knowing that I saw at least a part of it, and I didn't need to get my phone mm. out as much. I think. It depends on how you use it. I think all wearables <clears throat> are like up to you to have good digital well-being health. Like I don't have notifications on, on my Mi Band either mm. because I hate notifications. So I would like to see them less. Okay. So for me, smart wearables are mostly just for like important stuff, directions, things that'll make my life smoother without having to take my phone out. Yeah. Um, I do like when I when I do use notifications on them, like because like you said, not taking your phone out and being completely distracted by something in front of you and kind of passively being able to check information is yeah. very is useful and does feel feel better. Mm -hmm. When I used to wear Android Wear watches, um, I liked the fact that I could be having coffee with someone and if my wrist would buzz, like I could just glance like for a half second and see what was going on without being really taken out of the conversation. Yeah, that's true. Because often. We live in this world where, like, you get nervous now when you get a notification if, if you're, like, it's hard. Like, I think we're all, we've all been there where you're, like, a, you're having coffee with someone or whatever, and your phone buzzes in your pocket, and it's, it takes a lot of mental power to not just reach see for see what it is yeah. that's like the messed up part of notifications dude like i agree with that um but like i said you know if 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 you can ease that a little bit by just seeing the tiniest bit right. of it which i think it does yes yeah. i do agree with that yeah. um all right well focals by north gen 2 is on its way in 2020 uh 40 lighter 40 thinner um it's still going to use the projection technology <laughs> and all details are going to be coming soon hopefully yeah. we just got that email this week and i, I think was excited like q1 Oh, if, they're, wow. if they're at CES, we should try to meet up with them. Oh, 100%. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll hit them up, and then, yeah, look forward to our full reviews on these on our respective channels. Coming soon. Yeah. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get into our next part of the show. All right, let's go through some of your comments from last week's episode. It was a long one. It was one of those special event discussional episodes, conversational episodes, where, of course, you had me, you had Jaime coming into the show, um, and then you had Michael Fisher, Mr. Mobile, and Super Staff joining as well. All four of us were at the Qualcomm Tech Summit talking about all the announcements that they had. So let's go ahead and go through some of the top comments. This reminds me of Avengers Assembly. You know what? I don't really know who would be what superhero from the Avengers. I know everyone's going to say that Michael Fisher is Tony Stark, uh, but in my case, I don't know. Um, maybe I'd be Wong? I bought a OnePlus 7 Pro not long ago. I'll wait until we had a couple generations of 5G before I dip my toes into it. 
I really do agree with this. If you listened all the way to the end of the episode, and by the way, if you did, thank you so much. We did say that right now may not be the best time to get a 5G phone because we don't know exactly what 5G is going to look like once it's everywhere. Um, I mean, there's already talk about sub six versus millimeter wave and all that stuff. You might be seeing more and more videos coming out right now on YouTube about that very dichotomy. Uh, but yeah, right now, if you get a 5G phone because you can, great uh, but we'll see what happens maybe a year or two down the line when 5g becomes more prevalent it's funny how all three of you are wearing shorts but saf is like nope it's damn cold in the uk <laughs> well it's funny you say that because we were in hawaii at the time so it was actually pretty warm out um it was the warmest it's been in this big trip that i'm doing right now it was hawaii which was warm then we went to shenzhen for uh oppo innovation day and it was kind of cold there and now we're in tokyo which is experiencing its winter at the moment it's not snowing but even if the sun is out outside it's pretty cold out one of our good friends, Thunder E of Board at Work, chimed in. It's an 8CX Plus processor. The Pro X, he's talking about the Surface Pro X, has a smaller battery, and that's why the battery life is not that great. You know what? I have to say, I am using the Surface Pro X right now just to do this little portion, and I've been using it to write scripts for all of my videos uh, recently, and I have to admit, the design of this thing is so great, and the battery life, it's not so great. I agree. Everyone has been saying that already, and that's what I've been experiencing. Uh, but to be honest, this is one of the best experiences I've had just on the writing side. If I was just a writer and I wasn't doing videos like this, I would love having the Pro X on me. Uh, the keyboard is really nice. Uh, the fact that I can fold it up and use it as an entertainment system, because uh, you know, I downloaded a bunch of Netflix uh, videos on here, uh, all of it has been really good. So I'm actually really happy with it, um, but I understand why people are not so convinced. Jaime is the kind of guy that when he's upset, he's upset. Trust me, you have not seen him upset. 5G in London is very fast, which is good for downloads, but browsing the internet, you can't really notice much of a difference. Okay, I can see that. Um, that is one of the main use cases that people have, right? Is the fact that you can download a whole season of a Netflix show in like five minutes or something like that. Let me know if your experience has been like that. If you're back on this particular episode, follow up with me on that. Uh, but as far as browsing the internet, yeah, I mean, we've worked really hard, or rather the tech industry has worked really hard to create faster, more optimized um, websites. And that way they load up really fast, even on um, lower end devices, for example. So it makes sense to me that internet browsing Browsing, not too much of a difference. Look, the nerds from Big Bang Theory. Okay, real quick, I just want to respond to this because even though Raj is technically Asian, they didn't really have an Asian member in the Big Bang Theory, so this is a little bit different. All right, well, with all of that, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for listening to the Pocket Now Weekly Podcast and for watching it over on the YouTube channel. I hope you're okay with this sort of like quiet, more... I guess chill episode because I'm trying not to disturb too many people at this unique hotel that I'm staying at right now. It is basically a capsule hotel, but it's themed like a bookstore. So I'm trying to be quiet because generally in places like a library, you wouldn't be talking too loud anyway. In any case, you can follow my guest on this episode, David Amell, fellow friend and best friend, this person I'm actually traveling with right now in Japan. Um, you can follow him on Twitter at Dervid Immel, and then you can find him on Instagram at David Immel. And then, of course, you can follow me. I'll probably be posting a lot from Tokyo and from Japan over the next, like, three to five days. Uh, but, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at JVTechT and on Twitter at JVTechT because you know me. I'm JV. I love tech, and I love to drink me some tea. Don't forget to follow Pocket Now across all social media as well, at Pocket Now, and then subscribe to this channel to keep up with everything that we are doing, including the Pocket Now Weekly Podcast, The Daily, and also all of the content that we do on mobile tech every day. And from there, we're going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching and listening to the Pocket Now Weekly Podcast, and we will see you in our next episode.